All right, let's get into what transpired today in court. We had a new witness, uh, Mr. Matlou. He is an investigator at the Road Traffic Management Corporation. And he was going to testify, he was coming to testify insofar as accused number one is concerned and all other accused. So we're going to separate them, accused number one and all others, because it's two uh, sections or two testimonies which are distinct from each other. And before that testimony could start, Judge Ratam Khwating became a bigger person. Uh, he apologized. He took note of the unhappiness uh, in the media regarding his comments about black lawyers. Uh, he took notice that uh, the Black Lawyers Association wanted to meet with him or with the judge president. And before it could escalate to that level, he uh, unreservedly and unconditionally apologized for those comments. He somehow indicated that he didn't really mean uh, to undermine the black profession or the Black Lawyers Association because he's one of the founding members of that organization. He was one of uh, <clears throat> the writers of that constitution, uh, of the constitution of that organization. So yeah, he clipped uh, their wings very fast. So the matter is, is mute. I don't think anybody can take that further. Already certain people were suggesting that <clears throat> He should recuse himself. But the matter is mute now. And then after that, Advocate Ngomezulu as well, we learned that he sent a letter of apology uh, to the judge. <clears throat> and again, let's clarify this, guys. Uh, Ngomezulu. Uh, was absent from court on Wednesday without the presiding officer being aware. That's a fact. And later on during the day, I think after he realized the outburst of the judge, he wrote a letter of apology at around quarter past five. Uh, actually, that letter was sent to Rata at 21 past four, <clears throat> to be precise on the 20, 20th of March. So he saw what went down in court and he saw the need to write a letter and explain himself. And in that letter, he says he, call, he, he, he had discussions with his colleagues last week Friday. So it was clear by last week Friday, he was aware that there was a matter that he needed to attend to on Tuesday. Uh, so he spoke to the colleagues and he said he requested uh, Advocate Munyeki to stand in for him. And there was no issue with that. But quite interesting, remember he says on Friday, uh, he requested Munyeki to stand in for him on uh, Tuesday. But on Monday, he says he spoke to Ramu Sepil for Ramosepele to stand in for him, and Ramosepele agreed. But we know Ramosepele said, no, I'm, I'm not agreeing on Wednesday. And he says on Wednesday, the same day, at around quarter past four, he called Advocate Baloy. Uh, Advocate Baloy did not pick up his phone, but he returned his call. Uh, and we cannot fault Baloy on this one, because Baloy did deliver the message. Uh, Wednesday morning and then he also said he tried to call the judge's secretary uh, but uh, he couldn't get to her and he left a voice message so that was his explanation but in any case he apologized he said uh, his conduct had nothing to do with undermining the authority of the judge uh, he had to go and make money elsewhere because he was not paid for this trial uh, so he's got uh, debts that he needed to settle. So he needs to make money. So that was the basis. But now, 
the question that Rata was asking, the question of ethics, still remain because advocating Gomez Ulu says on Monday, before before I go to the Ramosepili issue, on Monday he requested uh, the court to adjourn and not sit on Tuesday. Reasoning that he need to go and study uh, the, the testimonies of the witnesses that Paloi wanted to call. But later on, he said, no, those testimonies can continue. I don't have a problem with them. So uh, his reason for requesting not to be present in court was not genuine. Yes, I understand people are saying uh, he did confirm after the, the, the adjournment or just before the adjournment that he's got a matter, but I think that was after Rata said uh, he knows these tricks. And also saying he requested Ramosepil on Monday for Ramosepil to come on Wednesday and say, no, I, I'm not agreeing. It, it, it questions the issue of ethics. So the issue of ethics is still there. The, the question that Rata Mukhatling uh, was was asking that does not go away uh, these people must behave but yeah we accept all their apologies starting with the judge apology accepted Ngomezulu apology accepted and then Baloi started leading his witness again before he could start leading his witness Charles Muniz advocate Charles Muniz wanted to object to uh, that evidence being led. He said he was not in possession of those affidavits. Uh, he accused the state, Advocate Baloi, of running a trial by ambush. He asked, these affidavits were made in October 2023 and Baloi must explain why they were not given to us on that day. He must explain, otherwise in the absence of that explanation we cannot uh, agree and he is that pissed off Baloi really I think he was pissed off uh, because he stood up and said but this is wrong uh, you can't be saying this I gave you I personally came to court to hand you over the copies of this affidavit last year after they were made and Munisi said no I have not received them Maybe others have received them, and indeed, others stood up. Ramosepil said, yes, I did receive my copy. And Numalo stood and said, yes, I got my copy. Uh, Munyegi could not confirm because it's Mshololo who should confirm. But chances are that Mshololo got it as well. Which says, which says again, uh, Charles Muniz, guys, has got a tendency of accusing the state of not providing documents on time, which is wrong because it's not for the first time uh, he does this. And we in this platform, unlike Judge Ratamu Khatling, we can again call black lawyers out and not all of them. Uh, some of them like Charles Muniz, uh, because their behavior sometimes can be appalling. It's not for the first time Muniz accused the state of not providing him uh, with the relevant uh, affidavits. One item that I remember him denying having received uh, was the identity kit. All the lawyers confirmed that now we do have that identity kit. It was disclosed to us. And there was another one or two affidavits as well before today, which he claimed he hasn't received, but everybody else had uh, received. So it, it's, a, it's becoming a common occurrence. Uh, by Charles Muniz and that behavior should be called out uh, because it delays uh, the proceedings. It, it is a waste of the court time. Court time is precious, guys. Uh, we, we don't just waste court time like that. In any case, uh, that matter was settled and Baloi started leading his witness, uh, Mr. Mr. Matlo. Uh, a man who seems to be experienced, highly experienced in what he is doing. He, his academic background included 
metric, uh, Bachelor of Administration, Computer Literacy, Certificate in Forensic Investigations, uh, Traffic Officer Diploma, Certified Fraud Examiner, etc., etc. Uh, so, after we dealt with his qualification, because Munisi was also questioning uh, his uh, authority, Munisi claimed that he was not an expert, and Balui said, no, he is an expert when it comes to these matters, and his CV does suggest that he, he is an expert when it comes to 90s, the 90s system. And the guy was coming to testify. Okay, before he started testifying, Advocate Baloy gave a background of what the testimony will be all about, uh, an explanation, a little bit of an explanation uh, of what the testimony would be about. Uh, and there was a flurry of objections. Uh, first, it was Ngomezulu who objected, saying Balo is giving evidence, but the judge disagreed. Then Ramosepili stood up objecting, uh, saying Balo is reading from the affidavit. Again, the judge disagreed with him. And Muniz as well, again, stood up uh, objecting, saying this is a 212 statement. It's either it's handed uh, like that, or we just listen to the oral evidence first and then hand the statement over later. But it would appear Munisi was lost in terms of what was happening. So Baloy had to read them uh, section 150 of the Criminal Procedure Act and section 212 uh, of the Criminal Procedure Act for them to understand. And that's why I was saying Advocate George Baloy was dishing free education that Nelson Mandela promised us. When Nelson Mandela said there shall be free education, people did not uh, contextualize what that free education uh, was going to mean or was going to entail. So today was one of that free education that Nelson Mandela promised us. Baloi was teaching them uh, the provisions and the interpretations of the Criminal Procedure Act because it looks like they had forgotten that Section 150 of the Criminal Procedure Act affords Baloi that opportunity uh, to do exactly what he was doing. And Judge Rata also was angry that this is a document that they could have admitted in terms of Section 212, but because they always refuse to accept things that are obvious, Baloi has to end up doing this. Uh, leading those kind of testimonies and witnesses because of the behavior of these lawyers. Uh, and that was Ratamukha claim, but he was nice. It was not about black lawyers. It was about those uh, in court who refused to concede to very basic things that are common cause, according to the judge. Ultimately, the testimony of uh, Mr. Matro uh, commenced and he started uh, by giving evidence regarding Muzi Sibiya. Guys, remember Muzi Sibiya through his lawyer, uh, Sipora Musepeli, when Zungu was testifying, remember Skumbuzo Zungu, Constable Sizwe Skumbuzo Zungu, when he was testifying, saying he was with these guys at the hostel on the 26th of October. 2014 before Senzo was murdered. Ramosepili put it to him that Muzi will come and tell the court that he was not around from 2013. Now that's a huge period. And I'm hoping nobody's going to try and compare this to Bongani Tanzi's situation. Who couldn't remember where he was uh, on uh, where he was on the 26th of October? This is a completely different situation. Muzi said between 2013 and 2015, that's a very long period, you have to be sure about that. He was not in Jobek. And when that proposition was put uh, to Zoom, it was certain he was not in doubt that he was uh, out of Haute. He was back home because he had lost uh, his job. He only returned to Haute uh, in 2015. 
I remember when the Ntanzi situation came, people ask us, where were you uh, on the 13th of October 2017? This is a different case. Now you can ask me where I was uh, in 2013, 2014, 20. I will tell you exactly where I was. Uh, so Mr. McCrow told us that, no, Muzi was around Gauteng. And not only was he around Gauteng, he was doing something very important to his life, uh, something that we can applaud him for. He was busy applying for a learner's license. Uh, uh, he wanted code 14, he wanted to drive trucks. So he applied for a learner's uh, on the, let me get the dates uh, properly. Uh, let me get the dates properly, guys. He applied for a learner's on the 17th of July 2014 uh, in Bragpan, in Gauteng, Ekurule. And then he was set down for the 22nd of July to write the learners, uh, which he failed. And he didn't uh, get discouraged after the failure, which is good. Uh, he did not get discouraged. He did not give up. Uh, same day, he went to Boxbeck. Uh, to do another booking, uh, he was given the 15th of September 2014 and on that, uh, on that date he passed. Congratulations to Muzi. Uh, he obtained his license uh, in Bragpan, not Emashavatini, not Kwa Nongoma, not Kwa Ketum Tandayo. Uh -uh. Not Kwa Kangela Mankengan, uh, in Bragpan. Uh, in Boxberg, uh, that's where he obtained his, his learner's uh, license. So that evidence, guys, buried Muzi Sibia's lies six feet under. Muzi was lying to the court through his lawyer that he was not around. Objective evidence proves that he was around Gauti. And that corroborates Zungu's testimony that Muzi was in Gauti and he was in Gauteng in Basotun Hostel on the 26th of October 2014. And that accords with his confession as well. Uh, that he, he, was, he was there in, in Fosloris. He was sitting by the electricity box uh, when Senzo was murdered. So those lies are buried six feet underground. No doubt about it, no argument. And this is where we're going to be impatient with people who believe in conspiracy theories. If anybody's going to come here and try argue those conspiracy theories that, no, uh, he was home, hey, 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 hey. We, we're going to listen to you, but we're going to challenge you uh, robustly so. So you better be prepared. Uh, for those robust engagements because this is where we don't smile uh, when objective evidence is before the courts and before us some of them we understand it as such as objective nothing else and then after the case of Muzisibia was dealt with Mr. Matro moved to the other accused the other four accused and the purpose of uh, that evidence was to really indicate that some of the numbers that Colonel Stein mentioned in his testimony indeed belonged to these guys and it's those guys, it's these guys who gave out those numbers, nobody else. These are their numbers, like the number of Fisokutlen uh, Tuli, uh, the number that Mtogozizi, um, Mapisa, Mtogozizi and Mapisa, uh, gave the ID numbers. Uh, number three did not have a cell phone number that was uh, that could be recorded on the e native system, but almost all of them, uh, they had their numbers which they personally uh, gave. Now, what Mr. Macro was giving us uh, was the records that existed in the Department of uh, Transport. As in a system like when you register a car there's a certain information that you provide 
And Stein told us that uh, that's where they got some of the information regarding these guys from the e system. And Macro today was telling us that, yes, that information was provided by them. So Fisokudran Tule has got had uh, some few cars which were registered under his name on the e system. And uh, one of those cars was the grey uh, Polo Volkswagen, the one that was used on the day of the murder, that was allegedly used. So it was confirmed that uh, he did register that uh, car in his name, or oh, actually it was not uh, in his name, if I'm not mistaken. I think it was rented uh, from a certain rental company. Uh, but it was linked to his name. Uh, yeah, there was a white one and there was a silver one uh, as well. Uh, I think there was about three cars that appeared on the system. And some of those cars uh, were linked to him because of the traffic fines that he accumulated uh, while he was on the road. So he would be stopped by the police. Uh, they would give him a fine, they would write him a ticket, as they write him a ticket, he gives them uh, his numbers, he gives them the address where he's staying, and that's how the information was obtained. And it is that uh, information that Stain analyzed and managed to link it uh, to the calls that were made amongst themselves, and most importantly to Kelly Kumalo. So, that exercise was done to all four accused, uh, but I think Mtanzi, if I'm not mistaken, had no car uh, registered in his name, had no traffic fine uh, in the period that was given. Uh, Prince Mtobisi Mube number three uh, only registered uh, one car, a taxi, I think later on, uh, not on the, t the, day, the day that was given. And then number four also had uh, one of two cars uh, that were registered. So the essence of that testimony, guys, was basically to prove that uh, these guys provided information freely uh, to the traffic officers, to e natives, and it is that very same information that was analyzed and proven to be uh, the information that was used, like the numbers that were used uh, to communicate amongst themselves, to communicate uh, with other people. So yeah, that's basically what transpired in summary, uh, guys. Uh, if there's nothing, if there's something that you feel I left behind, or I said in a manner that was not said in court, please feel free uh, to come and correct, feel free to come and add, uh, but be sure, if you are going to correct me, please be sure about uh, your story, uh, because we come here after having listened to the record. So have the time, the information, not even have the time, all the time, the information that we give you is 99% uh, accurate. Uh, there could be 1% inaccuracy there, and we are willing to be corrected. And if you disagree, again, with what you say, feel free uh, to come and share your views. Like I said, when we start the live, there's nothing wrong with disagreements, guys. We are allowed to, to disagree, we are allowed to argue, we are allowed to debate, but we do that with respect to one another. Uh, no shouting at each other, no screaming at each other, uh, no vulgar language or swear language will be tolerated. If you have, thank you, Babo, if you have any different or differing view, feel free to come and express it in a respectful manner. We only block people when you disrespect our ground rules, guys. We don't block people for disagreeing with us. Uh, only if you disrespect us, we will show you the door.
All right, we've got official minister, captain of flight 636. Uh, official minister, good evening, my friend. Good evening, Pratenzo. Hey, How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good evening to everyone else. Pratenzo, there is uh, some song that I love. We sing every time when we get paid three million. It says, Ukinindalo, Ukinindalo. Ava mazio, ava zange vamo. Ukininda lo, ukininda lo. Ava mazio, ava zange vamo. Ava zange vamo. Ai, ava zange vamo. Ai, 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 ai. Pradeni. Yes. You know, this is a seasoned police officer who doesn't leave any stone unturned. No. He goes all out. Yes. This is Brigadia Pongani Kininda. Yes. Uh, but Pradeni, uh, one thing we have learned from Muzi to everyone else who is uh, getting it tough, especially when you are doing your studies, let failure not define you. We can see he failed. But when he came back, one of the questions he got 100% to show that he learned from his previous experience. Let this be a lesson to everyone that failure must not define us. Uh, the second time around, you'll do much better. Yes. I was shocked, Bradin, when Munisi was standing up. I was rattled, I see the state is rattled. He was rattled. Munisi mm. stood there listening to Makubo. Lead uh, Mkomezulu leading Makubo to evidence that was not going to help this court to make a determination in a trial within a trial. He was there smiling, looking down. He never stood up to say, this witness is wasting our time. He is here not to help us. It was only when Baloi stood up to say, what? Nothing. He said, yes, but you, are, you want to help. Yes, you are not going to help us with anything because you know nothing. Can your evidence not be considered? Munisi never did that, but we move. Uh, they were obviously rattled by what was... Uh, happening like you say they dispute everything like they those who are behind them they dispute everything because in this um, court we got to understand that Kininda uh, managed to enter into the AVL system and tempered with records even in this case Kininda managed to get into the NRT system and temper with records People think we are in some Hollywood movie here. Uh, but we leave that. We go to Mkomezu, Lopradeni. You know, it is very sad. Mkomezu was crying today. Mm. If you listen to that letter, he was crying. And he was saying, I am alone. My Lord, I am here alone. I've got financial obligations. When the matter came, I had to go and uh, get some money because I haven't been paid for five months. Yes. My friend called me to come here, but I was, n and he didn't pay me. But he didn't say that exactly. He said uh, legal aid didn't want to pay him, but we know it was not legal aid who brought him. Mm. His friend called him, and he didn't have nice words for his friend if you could really analyze. Why am I saying so? He called Baloy, Advocate Baloy saw a missed call. As professional as he is, he returned to him. He called Miss Mushololo, uh, Advocate Mushololo, Advocate Mushololo saw a missed call. He returned to him, showing that uh, she is professional. What did he do? 
He called Ramosepele, WhatsApp Ramosepele. He never came back to him. And that shows unprofessionalism. I'm completing that statement, Pratin. Fill in the missing words. Please. Because he didn't say utter anything of professionalism as far as Ramsepele is concerned. <laughs> and the last words, which were very painful for me, Pratini, yes. it was, my Lord, in this court, everyone else, <clears throat> if he is not here, somebody else stands in for him. Munisi was not here. I'm completing the missing words, Pratini, <laughs> because I know. Advocate Tulan Mkomezulu was not going to write that. Mkomezulu, I'm going to do it for you in the in the name of fairness, my friend. Um, I'm going to complete. When Munisi was not here, Munyeki stood up for Munisi. Yes. Ramo Sepela was not in court. We know one of his colleagues saw him in Runback, attending to some matter. Mkomezulu was there. Yes. When Mshololo is not there, somebody in stands for him. When Numalo is not there, somebody stands for him. He said he was crying, Pratini. That mm. was very painful and touching. He was crying, saying, why when it is me, no one else wants to help me? Why me? That's what Advocate Tulan or Mr. Tulan Mkomezul was saying. Mm. That was touching, Pratini, and it was very painful. I'm sorry, Mkomezul, that I'm no longer donating, my friend, but it is very sad and this is very unfair to you and your family because you are in this case uh, to assist the court, but your colleagues, when you need them, they are not there. Now, the colleagues come and tell the judge. They don't tell the judge the full story, Pratin. Ramasipela doesn't say, I've received a message. He doesn't even stand up on Monday to say, I got the WhatsApp. Uh, last two, uh, earlier when I made my submission during the week, I said he never contacted me directly. I've got a missed call, I've got the WhatsApp that he tried to contact me. No one is saying anything. I think Mkomezul is on his own. Uh, his colleagues are not coming forth to help him and it's very sad. Uh, let me move because that's not the biggest thing, but I thought I must just complete the sentences from Mkomezul because um, shame. I, it was very bad for him. And I'm with you, Mkomezul, on that one because I, you are on your own, my friend. But let's move. Pratini, was Tseva Spoku? He spoke. Yes. Spoku, Pratini. Today we have get to witness that there is a Spoku. A Spoku. Ramo Sepele uh, says, this gentleman called Muzi Sivia, he was not here. He left 2013 uh, because his, uh, he was no longer working. He went home. And the only time he came to Johannesburg to stay with his uncle, who was imaginary at some point. At some point, he was at the gate. At some point, he was not there at the gate. To stay with the uncle in Tempisa was 2014. I mean, 2015. But we know there is a spooky ghost that on the 17th of July wrote uh, a learner's license, failed and immediately went to another testing station, license department to book again. And then the same ghost wrote on the 15th of September 2014 and passed. So that's what he's saying. Baloy was ravishing, was bearing that nonsense to say, this is nonsense. This guy was here. Like Zumu said uh, something like uh, when they said he was lying, he said something, um, saying this is a blue lie, something towards that line, Pratin. I'm measuring the language here. But let's close all. Uh, 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 the nonsense and help everyone because there are people who are already started spreading fake news or twisting information to say, ha, Kininda knew in October and uh, November about this in at his report. So where did he get this number? Something like that. Because they are saying this report came after Stain has testified. But we are saying that is nonsense because that report was not to source telephone numbers. Yes. 
Yes. It's just that the telephone numbers a company these are the personal details that accompanies the motor vehicle registrations and details but yes. let me help you the story begins on the 27th of october 2014 Pradeni, when a uh, kennel nisling started investigating this case and on that day kennel nisling with authority in him collected six cell phones from that house and then he gave those six cell phones to Elfas Umfoga Mushwana, yes. a diligence officer with expertise in uh, data extraction or downloading. He uh, was tasked by Kennel Nithling to download this data. Mushwana diligently carried that work, downloaded the data, but surprisingly, on the 28th of October, after he was done with that, before he handed that a raw data to uh, Kennel Nisling. Um, a plot thickened, Pradeni, because a constable Masaba emerged saying, uh, I'm here under the directives of Brigadier Ntlovu to collect this raw data. Mm. What do we know from that time? The instructions were very clear, Pradeni, that that CD, the data is encrypted in that CD. But what remain crystal clear is the absence of substantial report apart from the kennel stain report mm. that one we don't know of any other report but we know this data ended up uh, in brigadier Ntlovu, who is staying somewhere in Fosloras, fill in the missing weight yes. we know somewhere along the line section 205 was requested uh, because it accompanied the CD when it was given to Stain on the 9th of April 2020. Mm. How do I know that uh, that section 205 was extracted before 2020? Because it's got a lifespan of three years. So if it was extracted in 2020 or requested at that time, they were not going to get that particular date. So which means it happens prior to that. But was there ever a report? We don't know, Brigadier Ndlov, if he was here, he was going to help us because we don't know of any report. The report that we know is that one of uh, a, a, a Kennel Stay. At this point, Pradin, I can tell you with authority that Kininda have not yet reached to Sidi and Tanzim Nube Mapisa. He may have known about them, but he, has, he, he, he was still doing profiling as, them as the person of interest based on the affidavit of Absalom Zungu, not Sizwe Zungu, the father to Sizwe uh, uh, Zungu. But then what do we know? Because it's very important to follow this series of events so that we are not misled by people who are not following evidence. Mm. But what do we know? With newfound clarity, Pradeni, the investigation team swiftly mobilized because we know that the um, it was uh, after the confession of um, Ntanzi that uh, triggered so many things because the confession of Ntanzi was very critical because after that confession, uh, Kininda could tell that there is accused number 345, who is Mube, uh, Mapisa, and then and then in Tuli because why I'm saying it was after the confession? Because Kininda cannot send Mangena to go and fetch the gun or cannot uh, go and fetch the cell phone and leave the gun or leave, fetch the gun and leave the cell phone. We know the gun was collected by the 20th of July by Mangena, mm. which means it is almost at the same time when the phone of Mube and all that were collected. But... What do we know according to the evidence by Stain uh, uh, Pradeni? It, Stain tells us that he used the INAT system. He was explicitly asked by Valoi when he was giving evidence to say this number that ends up with 202 uh, of accused number five, how did you get hold of it? He said, when I was doing my own profiling, I sourced this number from uh, the databases that I've mentioned. That's INATIS, SDS, Police Crime Administration System. We know that is how he got the number. When he was cross-examined by Mushololo, he 
he, he, he said, I've even only get, get the number through my profiling when I was searching through all these databases. I got also another information which confirmed that this number belongs to accused number five. And Mshololo Les said to him, that's a hearsay evidence, let's leave that out. Based on the information you got under e Natis, can you say this is his number? He said, I cannot really confirm, uh, but I must state on uh, 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 before court that the investigation team submitted additional evidence to confirm because he couldn't confirm this information as this number was not recorded. So to come and insinuate and claim that uh, this number uh, that called Kelly Kumalo twice was given uh, by the investigation team is incorrect. This guy unearthed it with his own profiling. It's just that he supported it with that additional evidence. And this number, Bradeni, today we know know that it they exist in the ENRT system because this gentleman is the same number, Bradini, the one that they called in court. I can tell you if you've forgotten the evidence of stain, it's the same number that called Kelly Kumalo uh, twice uh, in August, uh, if I still get my date correctly, in August and October, uh, the 12th, I think the 2 of August or uh, and, and the 15 of October 2014. That is the number. Mm. So I just wanted to give that background that Baloi was just cleaning the street, uh, making sure that the evidence is evidencing. Uh, that's why many some people were rattled, they were forever standing up. Uh, but uh, he also teached some lessons as well to say, uh, this is what I understand what the Criminal Procedure Act is saying. So with that, Bradeni, I would want to thank you for the opportunity, my brother. And while we're still on that, official minister, let's also clarify, let's clean the streets uh, with regard to Kenneth Stain's testimony. When Kenneth Stain was testifying, next to him was a Section 205 report. And throughout his testimony, he kept on saying, some of this information is on the section 205. It's here in court. So section 205, when Stain was testifying, was there. It's not an information that has been hidden from the court or from uh, the, the, the defense lawyers. That information was there when Stain was testifying. It's just that it could have been in a format that could not be uh, maybe translated, but it was there because I've heard some people saying uh, they, they cannot bring 205 because 205 is going to contradict. Uh, there's no contradiction. Stain testified that 205 was part of his investigation, was part of his analysis over and above all these other uh, instances and databases where he could get these guy's numbers. He told us that some of this information was provided by the accused persons when they were buying things in the shops, furniture shops, or when they were giving information to the police. Now we know that accused number five had a number of traffic violations where he was stopped uh, by Metro for a number of violations, and he gave out that number. That's exactly what Stain told us. No contradiction, none whatsoever there. So I'm hoping no one on this platform, honestly, is being confused uh, by this information elsewhere. Uh, you, people can be confused, but not on this platform. But if you are uh, confused, we will take time to try and explain these things, how they fit in together, because it is easy. That there's no complication. And Pradeni, the reason I'm saying Brigadier Tlovu owes us answers. Yes. If it was not of him collecting that, yes. at that point, this matter should have been resolved because yes. they would have requested the 205 
of all the people who recently communicated with Kelly. Yes. Uh, especially on that month and three months. They normally yes. go for three months to six months. Yes. And at that point, it would have reflected that this guy yes. communicated with Kelly. But they only got one, two. Remember when you get that section 205, you don't get it on two numbers. You get it on one number. Yes. That is why uh, 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 um, the report that you, 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 you have from 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 the providers it only tells you about that particular number it will tell you if uh, that number at uh, that particular day is the one that receives the call that's where you see the mobile terminating number yes. or it will tell you if that number is the one that made the call mobile uh, or, or originator so based on that it's only telling you about this number you didn't know any other information about the number that made the call Yes. or the number that received the call. For you to get the end-to-end, -end, it is uh, for you to request for that information. To simplify it, Bradini, let's talk about account numbers. When I make a, a, a transfer into your, your account, it will just show you where the money is coming from. You are not going to have full details about me, but your bank will have more details about you in terms of who is this person who has received the money. But if they need to get the information about the person who made the payment, they must request from that bank that made those transactions. Then you will have the end-to-end -end, uh, transaction. But because of Brigadian Dove, today we don't have Section 205 for these other accused because if this data was analyzed, those records would have been requested and this matter would have been long resolved. Thank you, Official Minister. <laughs> and for those who are asking what is 205, guys, we are talking about Section 205 of the Criminal Procedure Act, which empowers the police uh, to go to institutions like the banks, the mobile telephone operators, uh, to request personal information against you. If you are suspected of committing any crime, the police can go and source your personal, your personal protected uh, information from the bank, from MTN, from Vodacom, from Celsi, from Telcom, uh, relying on the provision of the, the Criminal Procedure Act section 205 so when we're talking about 205 uh, is that provision in the cpa that empowers law enforcement uh, to obtain information that ordinarily uh, would have been regarded as personal that's the kind of information that i can go and obtain i can't go to the bank and say they must give me information about official minister uh, that is private information, but the police armed with a section 205, which is uh, usually authorized by a magistrate or a judge, if I'm not mistaken, they can obtain that information against anyone. So, yeah, when we're talking 205, that's exactly what we mean. Uh, okay, I think Koko Mama, you are next on the queue, if I'm not mistaken, Brenda. Evening, 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 everyone. Evening, Koko <laughs> Mama. Hey, TGIF. <laughs> and TG. And TG Gininda at Ramudim. And on that note, guys, of cleaning the street, let us clean the street even yes. further. Let's sweep. Let's sweep this thing. You see, this, 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 this uh, 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 motor vehicle that is busy running around that wants to allege again this thing of uh, is cooked. The records are cooked. E-native, I mean E-natives, things are cooked. Uh, we want to quickly put on 
the, the, the spikes so that red pancha matire kolo yewe isechu iya hole before it gets any far. In nature system, I believe it would be a CETA system that is administrated out of CETA because it belongs to the government, right? Yes. So I think I need to give a little bit of a lecture on, 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 on government systems, how they operate in terms of cooking things. Yes. Uh, a system like, like Natis, right? I, I'm not going to speak in absolutes because perhaps maybe I, I want to put this caveat to say that perhaps maybe uh, it will also depend on the degree of sensitivity for the information that is contained in that system that you are using in your department. Right? But one thing I can tell you is that 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 Matlo, he was he was reading from a black screen system. Black screen systems are, are, are systems, we call them black screen because their, their entire background is black. And then the information is written in white, right? Now, it's unfortunate that we couldn't see him on the system as he was busy there, but he, he was literally logging on for them right there. Mm. You get an OZ number, right? And then you log in with an OZ number and your password. But further to that, there is also another step that is called a non-repudiation system. A non-repudiation system is, is a, a system that it comes with an external hardware that you plugged into your, your, your PC, right? This little hardware, it's got a card in it, right? This card contains your information. In other words, that card, it records your fingerprints on it. Right. This is the external hardware that you plug in and then you go and you do the non-repudiation system. Now, to repudiate, when we say non-repudiation, to repudiate, it's just a deep English for saying to deny. So that system is made it's called non-repudiation so that you cannot come and deny that you did something on that system because you're going to sign in with your fingerprint. You understand? So unless you can come to court and say my finger was, was, was chopped off and therefore someone is using my finger to, to modify something on the system, you cannot come and repudiate to say, no, I did not. Right. So when you log on to a system, you do that whole password, you do the, the, the whole uh, uh, username with the OZ, and then you go to non-repudiation and say, okay, now I'm logging in. But further to that, further to that, you every single modification that you make on someone's name or someone's profile on that system, you're going to sign that specific transaction with your fingerprint still. That is why you would have heard that man saying in court, you would have heard him saying, he said, okay, this was done and this was done. And then he said, who did it? Because that is, it's simple. You are never going to be able to say I did not because mm -hmm. it will say that you are the one who signed him in, right? Who captured his information. You understand? So there is no way that someone can agree on that I know of. You will never agree to go and cook things or to modify things that you do not know of on a government system, not one that is that is being administrated by, 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 by um, what you call them, right? By CETA. So when you come and you say it is cooked, then it means we can easily without any 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 trouble we can go and we can just click on audit trail and we can see the audit history to see when these numbers were put on the system it will tell us there when was this number put in was it put in at the time that this person actually uh, 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 came to do at that time in 2013 or 2014 or wherever or was it done 
now. Later now, in other words, when they were apparently cooking this. It will tell us. It won't have a problem. And it will even tell us who did it as well. So that one is not, it's not possible to cook on those systems. It's not. There are, there are steps in place that are put there so that it can be, in order for these things to be admissible in court, it's because their validity is verified. It's verified. Now, again, I do not know if the native system also has that non-repudiation system, but I know that uh, uh, they love non-repudiation because you, you can't deny a transaction that you signed. You can't deny it unless you can show us that you have a finger missing. So there is no cooking. If they cooked, it will be easy to bring that person to book. That's all I want to, to say, Braden. Thank you, Coco Mama. Okay, guys, thank you for 300, over 307,000 likes. I'm sure today is one of those days where we are going to hit 1 million likes before uh, we stop the live today. Oh, the person I wanted to call has just dropped off. Brenda, good evening. Evening, Brad Denny. Evening, everyone. And thank you so much, guys. Official and Coco. How many times did you guys uh, write your learners? <laughs> Ah, uh, now it was about my five times. So, listen to me, I was thinking he did. What must be? Are you going to party like this? Ah, but then I'm sure we're not official because now I I wrote it once. No, no I, you don't think you yeah, write it once. No, you write it once. That thing. I asked it once, uh, Brenda. I I killed yeah. it very first time. That thing you. Yeah. I killed it and it expired uh, before I could get a license. I went for the second time. I killed it again without any hassle. The only thing that gave me a problem was a license. I had to try three times. I got it the fourth time. Mm. You see. Yes. Yeah, no. Yeah, I know. I, I, I wrote it. How I wrote it times? once. Uh, it was once. I remember getting there. Somebody said to me, are you going to write the license? I said, yes. He said, no. I can give you... Uh, I can make a plan for you so that you don't write but I can give you a license, a driver's license, and then you get learners for free. I was like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> license, learners for free. Why do I need the learners if I've got a, a license? Then I license realized that free. that guy was trying to scam me, obviously. But I went, rode it once, and then it was not on the system. It was uh, like severe deed on a piece of paper, and then they had to take that paper and then uh, mark us manually. Uh, yeah. And then that was it. But it was here in Marlboro, uh, next to Alex. Yeah, you see those ones, the, the manual ones, they can dribble you when they want a uh, coke. You understand? Mm. They can yeah. easily say you failed. They can dribble you there and say you failed when you didn't. The the, the electronic one, it's you are there. The, the system is the one marking you anyway. Yeah, learners, <laughs> learners is easy. Saying... Learners is easy. Yeah. So the difficult uh. thing uh, is license because now you are being tested physically uh, by somebody and they look for very little mistakes. I remember the guy who tested me on my second and third attempt uh, in Albertine saying, hey man, I'm going to fail you before you even get into the car. Just with inspections. <laughs> I forgot to say the tire is full, uh, the side mirror is working, those things. He said, well, 
You are going to fail before you even get into this trap. <laughs> Hey, brother, now nah, I failed my license because that guy, I asked him. I asked that guy. I remember him, but I'm not going to say the name. I still have his name, brother. Yes, remember his do. name. I said, why are you writing with a pencil? <laughs> why don't you write with a pen? Oh, you think you are clever? Because I had to go to the write with a pencil and then they can erase mm. and then deal with you if you don't put a cold drink. So, yeah, it was tough with a license because, yo. And I see somebody saying... You just you fail, I body. don't know how. Yeah, he's saying you you and and official bodied. No, we, we didn't buy. Let me tell you a, a story quickly. Uh, in, no, I'm not uh, associated with corruption. I don't even <laughs> give cold drink. Uh, if it's a ticket, you must write it. Simple mm. as that. Mm. So, ah, uh, it's a waste of time. Let me give you my story in less than two minutes, how I finally got my license after three failed attempts. The guy who was testing me, he looked at my address and it was say, it was my work address. So he saw the name Hotin and he was like, yeah, I'm with Uncle Hotin. And I'm like, no, I'm not from Hotin. <laughs> I said, well, but what is Hotin doing there? He said, I said, no, I'm working there. And then he started asking me about my employment. Oh, okay, where are you working there? So I'm telling him I'm working for the Film and Publication Board. So he started asking me, what are you doing? I said to him, no, we work with films. And he said, what kind of films? I said, all films. All films <laughs> that you can think of. All films that comes into South Africa before they go to the market, they come to us. He said, all I said, yes, all. And then he said, even those ones. I said, yes, even those ones. <laughs> Which ones are those ones? Those ones. <laughs> Which? Which? And I said to him, so he asked me, do you have them? I said, in bulk. I've got plenty of them. And he said, Tell me, I want those. <laughs> You're not going anywhere, man. You must come back here. <laughs> and from that point, remember, I was being tested with a truck. And those trucks, yeah. they've got pedals on both sides of the driver and the passenger. From that point, after I promised him, oh, no, I've got them. I'll, I'll get them for you very quickly. He was dry. I was only managing the steering. I, he was, when I got to the stop sign, I tried to stop and observe. He was like, hey, let's go. <laughs> so, I, I didn't Bro, you didn't believe. <laughs> yes. Do you still do you still have them, Brian? A, lo a lot of them. Ah well, there are all those people. I'm telling you, back at this, they can't even perform anymore. Which yeah. films are you talking about, man? So not say. Tell us about China. Tell us about China. I didn't. Have you ever read a verse like Somebody said the Nagarata the the song. They say song ya. Libito lango na yo kema bar Emmanuel. You know that song ya. Libito lango na yo kema ki Emmanuel. Oh, gita la jadi Bible stories. Yes. Oh, jadi Bible stories ya wu Emmanuel. Yes, and I heard them like for for real. Because we used to confiscate them from the street. On the street, you can sell uh, these other ones, but those ones, they are not allowed. So we we used to confiscate them. So I, I had plenty, plenty of them. So you gave, it, you gave him one at least, Brady? Yes, I, no, not one. A lot. Many. Hey, yes. I don't know we are innocent, guys. Uh, you paid for generation to generation, Brady. <laughs> Brother, I don't see anyone on the list. I think I think there's one. There's, uh, there's one who just requested. Uh, let's check if he wants to say something. That's Mahai Mutau. That was an ad break, guys. Yeah, we need those words. <laughs>
Mahai. Good evening. Okay, I think Mahai requested by mistake. Mahai. Can he even hear us, Braden? Huh? Kara, can he even hear us? No. You know, I'm going to take the user with. Especially this one, Brenda, who doesn't have followers. Yo. User. User 7408. Can you hear us? Inatis user. <laughs> Yes, I can hear you. How are you? Yes, you can. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes. I am, you know, for the first time I'm joining you, but I've been following you for quite some time. I'm happy with the information and the, you know, the we get educated in this podcast. Um, what I like is the fact that you put things on the table so that we could understand. Um, my thing that is still um, quite of a mystery to me um, is because I don't know, but maybe I can be, you know, led into this one. I'm still not convinced that Senzo was the target. I am thinking Kelly was the target. And I think, um, you know, with these people, when they plan their things, obviously they know the numbers. Kelly is somebody in the public. And they would know her numbers. And uh, I'm still hoping, and I might be proven wrong by things when they come to court, but I still believe that the day that Kelly comes to court, we will hear the truth because those people can mask many things and front uh, as if they were talking to you, you were talking to them. Those things can happen um, uh, considering technology today. Uh, people's phone get hacked and they start, you know, being used in some way or another. Oh, yes, Hello? Are you still with me? Okay. Sorry for that. Okay. I was saying, can I continue? Yes. Yes, I was saying uh, phones get hacked today and whatever. But I am holding on this one. And I, I know that I can be proven wrong. My, it tells me the way this thing is unfolding. And I don't know whether I, 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 because I don't believe these people were coming there for Kelly. These people, I'm sorry, I don't think they were coming there for Senzo. Senzo, unfortunately, was shot by mistake. Considering the fact that other people supposedly mm -hmm. are saying uh, then Gavis won't shoot you with one bullet. And it tells me that it's because they were not there for him. And he got shot by mistake. The person that they were there for her, for, 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 for her, it was Kelly. And unfortunately, Senzo protected Kelly. But then we'll see as the case unfolds. Thank you very much for affording me this opportunity. Giza. Why, what do you think was the reason? What could have been the reason for 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 them to want to kill Ke Kelly Kuman? Um, the reason being, I'm just talking hypothetically so. The reason being that we know that uh, Kelly was not, uh, the, 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 their relationship, most of the people were against it. And... Um, and also the fact that I suspect that what Zandi said in court, that Kelly has always wanted to get out of the relationship. But the fact that I'm thinking, 
the reason why she was she wanted to get out of the relationship is because she wanted a serious relationship with Senzo. And Senzo was not committing to that. And every time she thinks that was going to happen, Senzo was not leaving his wife. And therefore, Kelly somehow got irritated by that. That every time I think this man, because we know pillow talks, you know, men will tell you, more especially when they've got side chicks, they will lie and lie and lie. But at the end of the day, they never, uh, you know, leave their wives for side chicks. So that uh, from what uh, uh, Zan uh, uh, Zandi was saying, I think that is most of the time when Kelly was feeling frustrated about the relationship. Okay. Sure, Yosa. Uh, you are bringing an interesting point um, that it might have been something that went wrong. So my question is, how then do we answer the questions that um, within that house, uh, the, 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 the dreadlocked guy who, who was wash, who was uh, uh, um, washing Senzo's car uh, was then pointed as the guy who entered into the house. How do we, do we answer that question? Wasn't it that a deliberate um, to mislead the police? And then the next question, because they pointed that guy who is currently Zamogutle Mbata, who's currently suing the state. But that guy is known. He has been washing, washing Senzo's car not once, twice almost every time when he is there. The second question is, here is a unique picture that has never been seen anywhere in the, uh, in, in, in the internet landscape. It has never been on Facebook, Twitter, even on Google Images. It's not there. But this picture is then found inside Kelly's cell phone and uh, accused number three, who is Mube. And uh, we, how, how, do we, how do you answer that point as well, which is a question number two, to say, here is a unique picture that is shared among two people, and then they deliberately pointed the wrong guy, other than communication. Okay. I... I, 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 maybe I should maybe clarify the fact that I believe those people, the five people, the fact that they are, you know, a, a guilty of this case. Fine, they did it. But I'm still struggling with the fact that Senzo was the target. That I'm still struggling. But I am saying that I'm hoping... And maybe uh, I'm, 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 I'm just, you know, the, 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 the evidence will prove me wrong. I'm hoping and thinking that uh, and, and believing in my head that I don't think Kelly was the target. Uh, this thing, immediately after it happened in 2014, it was all over that Kelly is the killer. But as it started to unfold, even the people that were not supporting Kelly from Senzo's family, then they start saying Kelly is not the killer. Then you ask yourself, what is happening here? Who is who? So I just want to say, you know, I know that I listen to your things and uh, every time people who are more experienced in these things, they will say, let's wait, wait, wait for the case to unfold. But I just wanted to put my two cents that I, am, I cannot say to you and give you to say, this is where I stand by. It's just me thinking, I don't think Senzo was the target. All right, uh, okay. user, just a mm. moment then. Mm. So you, you just you just put a, a, a thing forward here. You just said that you you do in fact believe that these five accused uh, are guilty, correct? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So if you believe that they are indeed guilty, do you believe the the confessions that have been put forward by them? 
I believe the confessions, but I, I think they were twisted some way. Okay. So, because but, the confessions but, happened in around 2020. You know, so they were. They also knew about certain things and where the the, the wave was going. Uh -huh. You know, so they could have uh, tried somehow to change uh -huh. confessions to say now it's why both of them, even though they both confessions, they don't link the same persons, but they uh -huh. link the same. Person that they say it's the mastermind. All right, let's let's put the confessions because you have a problem with confessions. Okay. Uh, now, now let us go to the evidence that has been led, independent evidence that has been led. Okay. Yes. Say for example, Gininda. Uh, I mean, Barkeman. Uh, was it Stian Gambo? Whoever with the with the phone numbers, right? Yes. He said that. The, they have linked Kelly's phone number to some of the killers, correct? Mm -hmm. So meaning that there were conversations that happened between the killers as well as Kelly. Yes. So in your opinion, right, mm -hmm. uh, what do you think could have been the conversations in those phone calls uh, okay. between a person who is sent to kill someone and, and the person and the target, what do you think that conversation could have been like? My uh, uh, limited uh, uh, knowledge in this thing is saying to me, I don't know and I don't want to lie like the other lady that day to say that was not true what Stain put on the table. Mm -hmm. I want to say uh, at that time, uh, 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 I'm not sure whether the, the calls were coming from Kelly to that person or they were coming from that person to Kelly. Let's if, say they were coming from the person to Kelly. Yes. If they the were coming, was? yes, let's, let's, if that's where I was going. If they were coming from that person to Kelly, mm -hmm. anyone that wants to put me in the, uh, 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 you know, to say they were contacting me, they were contacting me. So it will come one day to say we had a conversation. But I am not sure whether uh, that evidence can prove that the calls were coming from Kelly to that person. Okay. If somebody wants to say, now I want to eliminate my husband, that person can start calling me. My, I'm a public figure. My phone number is out there. That person can start calling me so that they can derail the same way as Moses is doing now with his confession to put other people that we all know that uh, according to the evidence that is there in the court, we know that is not a, it's not the truth. But th this might be another strategy that the others are using that they, at the end of the day, it would be as if it's Kelly. That was the mastermind. Because even in the, uh, uh, their confessions, there is no way where these two uh, guys are saying, uh, we had them, they kept on saying CC, CC, CC. There is no way where they are saying they had Kelly, you know, talking to them. There, it's only CC, CC. Okay. CC can be anyone. I can be CC too. All right. So so now we, we, we also have a situation where the the killers are saying that we took the payment from that house. Yes. Right? They they mm. saying that it, it, they were told where to take that money inside the house. Yes. It was not deposited into an account mm -hmm. by someone. The yes. money was inside the house and it was yes. taken in cold hard cash in the mm -hmm. house. Mm -hmm. How do you suggest that uh, that's the where, money was that's then put in the house of the person mm -hmm. that is the target? Yes. And uh, and then I'm going back to the people that were in the house okay. that has testified. No one of them spoke about a money that was taken from the house. Okay. So these are the only two people that are talking about the money that was taken in the house. And then the phones are showing 
Kelly holding a bag, similar to the bag that is shown by accused number three. So that is where I was saying when I started, that is where I don't know how is that possible. And if it's true, it's Kelly. But I, I guess it can't be so cool. I'm afraid it's not so cool. I'm afraid it's not Kelly. I'm afraid it's not Kelly. It's a good evidence. It's a good chance. It's a good mar. It's a good chance. 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 It's a so I'm so saying when some of the things so are going to be proven. Okay, so when I'm not gonna worry, if if the target was in fact K, mm -hmm. who do you think then would have would have uh, ordered this? I think it's a bad idea. Just to know, I'm not referring to that. I'm not referring to that. I'm not to that. Monaco mm -hmm. Lai, I guess. In English, for English, English. English. My husband is mm. being killed. I guess. Mm. I was there. I was supported by the family as the wife that has been recognized. Yes. I have a child with this man. Mm. And I am not even interested on the case. I'm moving on with my life. Why don't I want to get to the bottom and see the day of light? Mara, that's because I get now you got killed while you were at your 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 side chick's house, your side chick that put me through hell. So that was but, but, but I was supported by the family. I was recognized by the family. I even fought with the side chick, Gospetle, and I said to the side chick, You killed my husband. Oh, and no. then, jiggy jiggy, I'm quiet. I'm out. I'm not interested. I'm living my life. Mm. I don't even go to court. Even when they say, now we found these people. I don't appear I, anywhere. So, user, user. I guess. Yeah. User, mm. I don't appear. I would not go to court when you got killed at your side chick's place while I we we fought endlessly about this pe person. I, I don't know when I wouldn't a, even go to the funeral. Now I wouldn't go to the funeral. Wakwa. So because do you now yeah, why do you go to the funeral and play chief mourner? And then to you, you you change. If you are honest, you are feeling undermined. And disrespected by this man. It's it, it, it's the same. When okay. he's gone, you say, I'm out. I cut myself out long okay. time ago. This man has right. disrespected me in public. No, that's fine, user. Uh, Aria Meled processes the unfold some more, then we will be able to, to, to know who yes. is the mastermind. Because after all, Right now, mm. there is no mastermind that has been uh, arrested as of yet, right? Mm. So let mm. us let the evidence lead yes. us to those answers because right now, we might be ahead of ourselves if we are no. saying that, if we are trying to pinpoint who is the mastermind and who did what, right? Mm. Mm. Yeah, so let's allow the process to unfold and let us be led by evidence and let us be open to evidence and not uh, be led by our own emotions about or a, I, I don't understand why a wife would not go to court. You understand? Yes. Because, no, I was just saying because yeah. uh, I, you asked me a direct question, so I was just answering it, you know. Mm. But but then, thank you very much, guys, and I respect you, and I get educated every day on wow. this uh, 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 platform. Before thank you, you so much. You, are yes, you. you will you will get it. You will get it. <laughs>
Before you go, Lisa. Right, Danny, can she just stay on the line, uh, on the panel, please? Can she just stay in the panel, please? Uh, I've wait, got a few wait, questions to ask her. I'm sorry wait, to, wait, to skip the line. Uh, wait, it's got a few questions. Wait, wait, Palisa. Uh, user. Okay. Yes. Uh, you're saying you've been following us, ne? Mm. For how long? Um, I started following you, sadly, after my daughter, who was a lawyer, passed on last year in August. Oh, sorry. No, uh, so yes, too. I started following you because somehow it was a way of, she used to say to me, you know, uh, uh, we used to talk about, uh, you know, legal and whatever things, you know, and she used to say to me, Mama, one day the truth will come out. You know, it, it will take long, but it will come out. So I lost my daughter at the age of 25 last year uh, in August. And after that, it was a way of trying to heal for me. Okay, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry about that. May her soul rest in peace. The reason why I was asking you that question is because I see your... Uh, user account is still new so i wanted to ask you what happened to your other account that you were following us with did we block you or what happened no you didn't i was not i didn't comment i was just listening to your things okay no that's fine thank yeah. you yeah it's the first time that i'm commenting oh no no problem i wanted to check that maybe we blocked you by mistake thank you no, you didn't. All right, uh, Palisa, right. Don't, don't prolong it. Now you can ask questions, can but let's deal with them quickly so that we can release okay. the user. All right. Yes. Uh, user, I heard you saying that, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry about that. Greetings to everyone. Uh, mm -hmm. I've just heard you saying that uh, Kelly was unhappy with the relationship, right? Did you say that? Mm hmm I'm saying so. how Sandy's uh, 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 testimony when she was asked about uh, the conversation between her and her sister. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, when do you believe that she was, she was unhappy with the relationship, according I, to you now? I don't know. I was talking about the conversation that Zandi presented to say Kelly was not happy at certain times. Okay. So if Kelly was not happy about the relationship, how can she be then a target? I, I, you know, when I said, uh, you know, it started with when I was asked a question, why, Kelly, I said it's because the relationship between Kelly and Senzo, it was not supported by many people, including Senzo's family. So it was not supported. And therefore, when this happened, everybody jumped to the conclusion that Kelly killed Senzo. And then those two, those messages between her sister, I don't know whether it was messages of conversations about Kelly saying, I am tired. I could have go, uh, uh, done with this thing a long time ago. And what and what, what I keep on coming back to this person. I would have dealt with him. And what, 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 what? I, that, that, that is where I'm coming from. Okay, I understand you. And what do you make of the uh, of the evidence that's before court today that those numbers that called Kelly last year, I mean before before the saga happens, they are also the numbers that are linked to this accused. Why would they call, why would they call, call Kelly and not Mandisa? I don't know because man, uh, 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 the issue of Mandisa has never been out in the open but i don't know and i'm saying to you if you want somehow to put me in the picture that i was not there you can you call me and it will give evidence of that we me and you were speaking but if i want to cover my tracks i can use okay. it okay so uh, mandisa could have this people's number to call kelly I never said it's Mandisa. Remember, guys, all I said to you is strange the way things are happening to me in particular. It's my observation. 
And I am not saying Kelly killed Senzo. I am not saying Mandisa killed Senzo. That is never being deliberated in court. So I don't want that to be said. I, I said this. I'm saying everybody here. And, and uh, you know, most of the time when it comes to a spouse uh, 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 being uh, 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 dying or whatever, the immediate people are the ones that are going to be investigated first. Okay, let's close it, guys. Alisa? Okay, thanks, Bradley. All right, no, it's fine, Bradley. I still had so many questions for her, but it's fine. Yeah, we need to move now. Yeah, sure. Thank you, user. Thank you. Alisa, do you still have your own inputs uh, over and above uh, those questions? Oh, she's gone. Uh, SH1. Yes, official minister. You see, my question still remains, Pradini, to say, what do you make? Because I think I, I have a problem with what you are saying, because where there is evidence, she she looks other way where there is no evidence she goes and try to find evidence there yes we were told that everyone was investigated including the people who were in the house so there is no evidence that is led before the court that mandisa is involved so but there is an evidence that says here is a picture unique picture is found in these two people's phone. It means nothing. I agree. It's a picture. A picture can be a picture. But it doesn't only end there. There was a communication also between these people. And it doesn't only end there. On the day of the matter, a phone is formatted. A SIM swap is made. And moreover, there is that communication that no one can explain. And we are saying, with those things at hand, considering that it doesn't only end there, a wrong person was pointed, knowingly, that he had nothing to do with the matter. So when we look at all these issues, I'm saying, why do we try to look somewhere else where there is nothing? What do we say in this case? Is the picture planted uh, as a decoy? Is the phone call made as a decoy? Is pointing of an incorrect person as well uh, conveniently a mistake? Was the, what was being hidden when the phone was formatted? Was it a decoy as well or somebody formatted that phone? Uh, from online or whatever technique uh, that Kininda possesses. So these are the key questions that are not being answered, Pratini. And um, I thought she was going to touch on that, but um, maybe next time. Thank you, Official Minister. And lastly, Pratini, how did, they how did these guys know that uh, there was a communication between Kaylee and the guys? How did they know? Because they are talking about the communication in the in the in their confession, which was made in 2020, and prior to that, uh, in 2014, there was that particular communication. So it's just that there are a few things that need to be answered uh, uh, and clarified. Obviously, Kelly will get the day in court to come and clarify some of these things. But again, official minister, I think, you know, we are being too modest uh, when we say a picture can just be a picture. Uh, that picture uh, of the money between found in Kelly's phone and uh, accused number three's phone is not just a picture. And I think we should... Uh, avoid, we should reduce, not avoid, reduce uh, being too modest. We've been too modest uh, in yes. this life. Uh, the police, for, for Gininda to put it in an affidavit that there is a picture of the money back on Kelly's phone 
and I choose number three's phone. There's going to be backup testimony. There's, there's going to be met, metadata, or what do they call it? Metadata, or metadata. There's going to be that testimony. That's it's metadata, to, my friend. Meta it's, a, it's, 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 it's the data about data. Yes, metadata. That testimony will be led, guys. The same way as we listen to the evidence from e natives or natives. Kelly will have to explain that inconven that convenience. It's not a simple matter. Gininda did not put that information on the affidavit by mistake. It's not a mistake. This man digs. Why pay this man? This man was not playing games. He was not playing Fafi. So we that picture sure. is not just a picture. picture. That picture... It is the same picture. Yes, tells a story. And the police are going to back themselves up to say, this is not just a picture. This picture was taken at this particular time and sent to this phone at this particular time. And that testimony will be backed up by Muzi and Bongani Ntanzi's confessions that along the way there was communication. It's going to be backed up, corroborated by Bongani Ntanzi that when we got into the house, he pointed us to that plastic bag with the money. So it's not as easy as people want us to accept that no, it's just a picture. Uh, thank you, I'm Smingen Kosi, that she will come and explain that no, it's just a picture. No, it's not going to be that easy. Koko Mama, did you want to say something in 30 seconds so that we can move to other 30 people? seconds, Brady. They yes. say that he, he also said that, that, that picture. Ne? Yes. But there's this thing being peddled to say that it could have been downloaded from anywhere from the I think people need to understand when the police say we've downloaded from they are yes. talking about from the phone memory of this person they are mm. not talking about a a random download it's that they are saying that they took to download is to take from the phone of this person it's not a random download from the internet where they could have downloaded the same picture by coincidence mm. they mean that we took this from this person's phone memory and that f information from that person's phone memory and we found that the same picture that is in kelly's phone is also in accused number what what's phone that is yes. what they mean not a download that you go to google and just download any picture no no and they will prove it that it's from your phone memory. There they will be good. experts in that field who do those downloads, who will confirm the origin of that picture. And if the defense, thank you, if the defense have got an expert who can come and prove otherwise, then they can bring that expert. No complication. Thank you, guys.